Hello everyone and welcome back to Space Basics. In this video we are going to take a look at Rendezvous, which is two spacecraft meeting up with each other in orbit. Uh, of course we are also going to take a look at how to get to orbit once again and we'll review that a little bit. Uh, but we are going to do this with a Dragon 2 capsule on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket and we are rendezvousing with the International Space Station. So fairly common thing these days and it is going to involve some complexity and I'll probably forget some things that I should explain that I will miss explaining. So if you do have questions, please be sure to ask them. Uh, first things first, we are going to talk about inclination. Inclination is how different the orbit is from the equator. I'm not going to use the, the pen this time. Uh, so if you can imagine the equator here, the inclination is how much it is tilted upward or downward. And in this case, for the International Space Station, it is 51.6 degrees in real life. This one is actually at 51.4. Uh, so, yes, it is a fairly inclined orbit. And the trick with inclined orbits is, A, uh, if your launch latitude is higher than that, you're not going to be able to get to it very easily. So this orbit with the ISS uh, can service things, I mean, Launch sites that are at 51 degrees or closer to the equator, either direction, north or south, uh, can potentially get to it. Things that are further off from that would be very difficult. Uh, it would take a lot of delta V, a lot of propellant, in order to make corrections in order to get to it. And we'll see why in further detail. Uh, the second thing is, when you launch, you want to launch when you are underneath this orbit. So obviously, uh, there are locations which will never be underneath the orbit because they are too high a latitude. And the reason why the space station was placed in this orbit was so that Russia could launch its modules to it. So otherwise, there would be no way for Russia to launch its modules. This is the lowest inclination that Russia could manage. And that is because of its location. So... That is why it's in this orbit and not the natural orbit out of Cape Canaveral, which would have been 28.6 degrees. Uh, but we do want to launch when we're underneath that orbit. But that means that for our location at Cape Canaveral, there are two times per day that we can launch to the International Space Station. There is the occasion where we would go south. And that is this situation here. You can see the International Space Station is going around uh, this away and so if you want to launch into the same inclination we would go south at this point and meet up with it and we would not go north that would be precisely opposite the direction of the International Space Station and that would be bad uh, make sure that you're launching in the right direction at the right inclination now how do you match the inclination well you could just eyeball it actually but if you have information like the relative inclination here we can see that it is about 44 to 45 degrees that means that we're going to head south from the 90 degree angle by that amount in this case. So uh, normally the normal trajectory out from Cape Canaveral would be 90 degrees straight east. And in order to make this correction, we would instead go 134 or 135, that plus 90. Another way to look at it is this heading to target. Uh, right now the space station is behind us and its heading is 313. If it was in front of us, then it would give the correct heading, which would be 133.3, which is basically 180 degrees off from that. Uh, you know, if something is in the opposite direction, it'll be 180 degrees off. So you take this number, because it's behind us, subtract 180 degrees, and you'll get approximately the right heading. Uh, though it does change over time because it's, it's sort of weird and inaccurate when it's not on the same side of the world as you. I mentioned eyeballing, uh, which is just taking a look at and trying to go with that because in some games, you're going to have to do that. You're not necessarily going to have all the numbers. In real life, they don't necessarily have all the numbers either. They're not going to really eyeball it. They'll have ground control try and figure things out. And the astronauts in the spacecraft don't actually do the practical calculations to do this part of rendezvous. There's multiple parts to rendezvous. First, it's the launch part, which of course the astronauts are not in control of. That's computers on board a spacecraft programmed by mission control. Then when they get to orbit and get really close to the target, to the ISS, 
it's possible for the astronauts to take manual control and handle the rest of the rendezvous, especially under 100 miles or 160 kilometers or so. Around that region, it's possible to do a rendezvous, though the closer you are, the better, uh, the less fuel you'll waste doing unnecessary maneuvers. And after that, there is docking. Docking we'll save for the next episode, so that we'll set aside for now. High orbits are a whole other thing. So we're only talking about low Earth orbit. The International Space Station is in low Earth orbit. If you're familiar with stock Kerbal Space Program, uh, that makes things easy for you as far as launching and rendezvous because everything's at the equator. You would naturally, your launch site is at the equator and you'll naturally launch everything at an equatorial orbit. A uh, launch site at the equator can reach anything, but if you place something in equatorial orbit, then only some launch site at the equator can reach it. Remember, uh, the higher the inclination, the more places can actually reach that target. The reason it's on, at a high inclination here is so that Russia could launch its modules. A uh, polar orbit would allow everywhere around the Earth to launch to it. Uh, equatorial orbit will allow practically no launch site to launch to it. Just Kourou in South America is, I think, the only one that's really situated properly. And so then they could launch to it, but that's about it. Okay, but I don't want to launch southward. It's also nighttime. That's no good. So we're going to wait until we're on the opposite side of the world and launch northward, which is typically how they do launch to the International Space Station. And the ideal place for the International Space Station is just a little bit ahead of where you're launching from. So if the launch is from here, uh, then the International Space Station being ahead means that when you go into a lower orbit, which we will be going to, you can catch up because as described in the first episode of this series, the lower orbits are faster. So the lower orbits are the ones that catch up. Now, that uh, we talked about counterintuitive things as far as the orbits are concerned. The lower orbit is faster, the higher orbit is slower, but the higher orbit takes more energy to get to. So you actually have to put energy into your orbit in order to get to the International Space Station when you start out in a lower orbit. And which means you're burning towards your velocity vector or prograde. That's the term for towards the velocity vector. Prograde, retrograde is against the velocity vector, meaning that you're taking energy out of your orbit. And the reason why the slower orbit is more energetic is because it's not as deep in Earth's gravity well. So the velocity is the kinetic energy, but how deep in your in the gravity well you are, that's potential energy. And the higher up you are, the more potential energy you have. So you're in a better position if you have more energy in the orbit. So yeah, it's complicated, admittedly. We're not quite lined up yet. Let's see, where, where do I want to be for our launch? It'll be a close to dawn launch here, and we'll have an automated launch. I'm going to use KOS, which is a scripting program for Kerbal Space Program, to automate the launch and make it smoother, and we'll see what the program does, and I'll describe it. So uh, if our launch is, say, going to be, let, let's take a look at our burn times. It's about nine minutes altogether, but uh, we're probably not burning through all of that. So uh, let's say eight minutes ahead of time. I would guess that given an eight minute launch, I would want to uh, be about six minutes ahead of the line, the orbit line of the ISS. And what we're looking at here is time to descending node. And here it's ticking down here. You might not have this information, in which case you'll just have to eyeball it and use a reference. And that does depend on the game and what mods you have and that sort of thing. In real life, of course, they'll have the information. That's no question about that. You see that our heading to the, on the south side, we go 135. On the north side here, the ISS is currently behind us and we, uh, we would subtract 180 de degrees from that, so we go 45, and that's confirmed by this. Uh, the normal thing is 90 degrees, we subtract 45 from that, so we go 45. Uh, you subtract it from 90 degrees to go north, add 
uh, the inclination to 90 degrees, relative inclination to 90 degrees to go south. But again, you may not have all these numbers to work with, so you can just look at it. If we actually just look at it, it makes perfect sense that we should go 45 degrees north. <laughs> it's uh, Mm, there is an equation for it. It is related to not just the inclination of the target and your latitude, but also the speed of the rotation of the Earth because we have some orbital velocity here. And then you, you could use that to calculate it, but I'm not going to go over that right now. If you want to, you can look up launch azimuth. That is the term for the heading that you need to go to at launch. Launch azimuth, A-Z-I-M-U-T-H. And that will get you the equation to launch, to make sure that you launch into the right heading. But we are not going to do that manually. We are going to do that with KOS. So KOS is the script that I've written for the, has the script that I've written for the dragon. And this is the script. And so we are going to start it now. And hopefully we will get to the right inclination. So we're looking to correct this 45.53 degrees and get to zero. In any amount that we have more than zero is going to be delta V that the spacecraft has to burn in order to get to the space station. And that's not good because spacecraft going to low Earth orbit do not have much delta V. So here we go for the launch. And up we go. The Platform, I forget uh, who made the mod for the SpaceX launch towers, uh, forgive me for that, but the uh, rocket is by uh, Kartoffel Kuchin, KK Launchers Pack, and I made the Dragon 2. So, we are heading up, and you'll note that the Falcon 9 goes fairly steeply, and that is because the first stage needs to be able to return to the launch site. For Dragon 2 launches, they do return to the launch site recovery, so the first stage will come back and land. So going steeper helps with that and also gives the second stage enough time to do its part of the job, which is more substantial than for other rockets. You can see the relative inclination being fixed and that we are going to 45 degrees. The program already has that stuff in it. So spacecraft, whether it's Dragon 2 or Soyuz or Space Shuttle, regardless of the physical size of it, they usually budget around 400 meters per second for on-orbit operations if they're a low Earth orbit rocket. And that doesn't leave a whole lot of room for extra. Rendezvous with the space station, you can normally expect about 100 meters per second. Docking might take a little bit of extra. And then coming back takes about 100 meters per second as well. So you don't have a lot of fudge room for carrying cargo with the crewed spacecraft in particular. And if you have any inclination, one degree of inclination can take uh, 100 meters per second to correct. So, especially with Dragon, where the, the all the corrections are going to be made with the RCS system, the little thrusters, so they take a long time. And it might not be exactly in the right location. We'll talk about the right location to do an inclination correction once we get to orbit. But if you can correct the inclination on launch, that is obviously for the best. Uh, it is not necessary, however, for high orbit locations. If something is in a really, really, really high orbit, uh, correcting the inclination might not be the most important thing on launch. Uh, you still definitely want to be underneath the orbit of the target, though. Okay, so we have thrall down as we had really high g-forces, and we are soon going to see the separation of the first stage and ignition of the second stage. Note that the first stage, because of the heading, has already corrected most of the relative inclination. This would not be possible right here if the, the target was in a low, lower inclination. For instance, if we were going to some target at the equator, we cannot do the inclination correction right from Cape Canaveral. We would have to wait until we get to the equator and then do a large correction. And the faster you're going, the worse the correction is going to be. That's in general. As far as inclination correction, again, the inclination is how much the orbit is tilted. Uh, if you're going to have to fix that, how much the orbit is tilted, then you want to be going slow. So there are two times when the rocket is going to be going slow. 
either it is just starting out on launch or it's in a really really high orbit let's say we were on our way to the moon well the moon's only going 1000 meters per second so if you're headed out to the moon it's all right to just uh, fix the inclination when you hit the moon's orbit as long as you can hit the moon's orbit uh, right uh, it's going very slow we're already going faster than that so the higher up you go the slower you're going and it, the better it is to create inclination there because the amount of delta v you need to correct the inclination is related to how fast you're going the faster you're going the worse it is and so we do very little of the inclination correction on the second stage as you can see but we do need to hit that uh, mark and I, the most I want to see is 0.25 degrees here as far as our relative inclination that's how accurate I would like it to be I'll wait until the ISS was in front of us unfortunately and it's really in the worst place here if you want to rendezvous with something that's behind you you should get into a higher orbit that way the thing that's behind you can catch up because it'll be faster that way however we can't really do that with the fuel that we have uh, I guess if we really wanted to push the second stage we could but since they wouldn't really do that I'm, I'm going to avoid it I could also manually control the rocket and get it to the right inclination but just for curiosity's sake I decided to do this automated launch to see how it went so yeah if you want something to catch up to you you should get into the higher orbit if you need to catch up to something you should be in the lower orbit and we'll talk about exactly how you manage whether you're high or low once we get to orbit and we'll be doing maneuvers to do that but you can see it's still keeping up a little bit of pitch because it needs to get through the burn and everything it may pitch down ultimately The International Space Station is at more than 400 kilometers in altitude. We are going for uh, somewhat above 200 kilometers, so we will be substantially below it. But because everything is still so close together, it'll take some time to catch up uh, for to catch up to it the long way around, I guess you could say. Because what's going to happen is the gap is going to widen, and we're going to come around to it this way, relatively speaking. So we have to wait a long time because the ISS was not in the right place and so again if we were at a more favorable location as far as just waiting the ISS out and having long launch windows namely closer to the ISS's own inclination when it comes to our uh, latitude latitude is the north coordinate or south coordinate so we start out at 28.6 and we're now at 33 but uh, if we were at the higher latitudes, then we could wait longer and make sure that the ISS is in the right place. So here the relative inclination is really close to zero, but well, it's going up now, so I'll we'll have to manage it, but the timing is not bad. I forgot to put RCS fuel on here. This does have RCS thrusters, albeit nitrogen ones. So I'm going to activate the RCS, the little thrusters on the pod so that we can stop rolling around. Now how does the script decide what to do? Uh, that depends on where it is. Right now what I can tell you is all it's trying to do is keep the vertical speed close to zero. That's it. And has a tolerance of 20 meters per second to negative 20 meters per second. So it's just trying to keep it close to zero to finish things off. We'll hang out at 249 kilometers where it is right now. And it has also thrall down because we didn't need all that thrust. And that is the end of it. So uh, here the end that we're at is the lower end and then the opposite is the higher end. Okay, so with that let's check that that's right. We could continue using this stage for further maneuvers if I was trying to cheat or something. But we'll do it with just Dragon, especially since our relative inclination is just 0.02. Hopefully we can do this properly like that. Um, the second stage of Falcon 9 can deorbit itself, which means it uses the remaining fuel to come back.
but because I forgot the RCS fuel, it's not able to do that right now. It will need to turn around to do that. But we will proceed. And again, it is just the weak little RCS thrusters on this that do all the maneuvers, so it takes a lot of time. But take a look at the 391 meters per second we have available to us. And yeah, it is tight. So the first thing we need to do is wait. And because we're already in the low orbit, we wait until we are close enough to the space station to do the further maneuvers. And so we'll be just behind the International Space Station for that. If you're in a program where you may not have all the numbers, you just can eyeball the distance between. I've had that in the game Reentry, where I guess I didn't communicate with Mission Control properly. So I just had to take a look at the orbit, orbit view and wait for planets for going out into really far locations that can get a little bit more it's actually more about the planet's location in orbit just like we would have liked the ISS to be in the right location getting to another planet is much more about the planet's location than anything else you can't just go around the sun over and over and over again waiting years and years and years that would be bad so around the Earth, because our orbit is only one and a half hours, much easier. So what you can see is our closest approach distance is just continually dropping. And each orbit, it drops about 1,400 kilometers. Here we're getting close enough that we should start worrying about it. And the first thing we need to do, as long as we don't have to do an inclination adjustment, is lift our orbit. If you do need to correct your inclination, you'll come up with a slightly different tactic. And actually, I'll do that version. So the sort of default version would just be at your peak, uh, lift your orbit up so that you're touching the target's orbit at one location. And I'll show you uh, how you know that you're doing that. But another way is just to take a look. See, the periapsis 405 kilometers, this side 422. So on that side, we would want to lift our orbit so that ours is at 405 kilometers. But if you need to correct the inclination as well, you should do it at either the ascending or descending node. And if you don't have these marked out for you in what, wherever you are, uh, the key is it is the location where the two orbits would cross. Now, we're in line, so our orbits are effectively crossing everywhere. But let's say we were tilted with respect to the ISS. That would be where this the, the tilted orbit, let's say it's the, the terminator line, this line uh, marking the difference between night and day. Um, so that terminator line hits the ISS orbit right here. That would be the ascending node. And it's the ascending node because terminator line there is going above the ISS's line. That means that if you wanted to correct that, you need to turn it southward. By contrast, on the opposite side, the terminator line, assuming that the terminator line is going this direction, you know, that has a movement direction that it doesn't really have, but pretend that that's our orbit and we're going this way down, then in this, on this side, when we get to about here, we want to lift our orbit up. So we want to go north. And so you can just eyeball it like that to figure out how you need to tilt your orbit. So here, if the, this line represented our orbit and we were going in the same direction, we better be going in the same direction. Uh, if we're going in the same direction as ISS, since ISS is going this way, we'd be going that way, uh, we would have to tilt our orbit south. So. Uh, what we would do is at the, let's say this ascending node is the point where the two orbits cross, we would pull this marker, which represents going south, and tilt down. And you can see the dotted line indicates that it is tilting down. Let's pretend that we are starting from this orbit, like I said, at the terminator line. So this is too far north. We had pulled it north in order to demonstrate that. And then we pull the orbit down. But you can see how much it would cost. Going back to this, 3,000 
to go from this line to that line. 3,000. So th this is why we do not want to make any such correction in order. But maybe you're just a tiny bit off. Maybe it only costs 100 to correct. Then that's fine. Not ideal, but fine. So you can also build in, build that in at the same time as you lift your orbit. So that is more efficient because um, Pythagorean theorem. Uh, <laughs> Uh, um, doing both at the same time ends up being the sum of the squares square rooted uh, a square the square root of a squared plus b squared uh, I don't know how to explain it any better than that okay uh, um, normally if you take a look if you did both of these separately you would get you'd have to do 45 and then 105 so a total of 150 because you're doing both at the same time it's 114.5 and that's because you're basically uh, taking the hypotenuse of the triangle of the two vectors. Ah, I hate my... <laughs> anyway, uh, hopefully you understand Pythagorean theorem, uh, but the, the Pythagorean theorem, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the idea is that we're doing some velocity one direction, some velocity another, in this case, uh, some velocity in the direction of our current vector and some northward. And if we build them together, we take the square root of the sum of the squares. And that gives us this number instead of both numbers separate. And that is beneficial. But we don't actually have to do this normal part, which is the inclination correction, because we're already at the right inclination or close to it. So we only have to do the 45.5. Actually, uh, it's not got that right. We just want... Now, we only want to hit the target orbit at one location. You might want to do it on the opposite side so that you're meeting up with the target in daylight. That could be nice. Okay, and we see that separation is still pretty substantial. The target is still ahead of us. So the target position is there. We're over here. So that's not too bad. Okay. So I'll just do this manually now instead of using any special tools. So I'm turning. And this is a point that I didn't make... Uh, sufficiently in other Space Basics videos, the little RCS thrusters when they turn, once you start them turning, it's just going to keep going in this direction until you do something else to stop them. Because that's just how it works in space. There's nothing else stopping you. So you have to fire these tiny little engines constantly in order to get to where you're going. Otherwise, you'll just keep moving. And there's always a little bit of residual, which we tend to like to have the computers stop, and that's what SAS is in this case. The SAS is a fly-by-wire system that detects sort of deviations and just stops those deviations. So, now that we're pointed at the vector that we want to go based on the plot, the yellow circle thing there is our prograde vector. That's the direction of our existing velocity. And that's the direction we want to go in if we want to lift our orbit. If we want to go higher, we go towards the velocity vector and increase the energy in our orbit. If we want to take energy out of our orbit and go into a lower orbit, we go to the opposite one, which looks like, in Kerbal Space Program, looks like a circle with a cross inside of it. So, again, we, we're not... In order to go higher, we do not fight against gravity. And the sort of intuitive thing would be to go away from the Earth to go higher, right? Uh, you think you would want to go this way, but that would be fighting against gravity and inefficient. So instead, we just increase the amount of energy in our orbit, and that gets us to a higher orbit. So we go faster. The faster we go, the more energetic our orbit is, and the higher it is on the opposite end. So this is another important thing. Uh, we, don't, we don't change our altitude immediately here. That would be fighting against gravity. What we do is we hang out at this uh, altitude or whatever. And by putting more energy in our orbit, we increase the altitude on the opposite side, not this side. Okay. And uh, by the way, the pink marker on this nav ball, which is what we call it, 
is the marker indicating the location of the International Space Station, which is also in front of us right now. So yeah, lots of things. But yeah, the little thrusters take forever to do this. So we will do some time warp. So this is the first burn that we do with the spacecraft and it'll it ought to be that you're lifting your orbit and maybe correcting some inclination. And that is the goal and you want to touch the target's orbit at one location. And that will be sufficient and only do that when the target is like directly in front of you if you're behind. If you're in a lower orbit, have the target close but in front of you. And if you're in a higher orbit, have the target be close and behind you. In that case, you won't be lifting your orbit up, you'll be dropping it down a little bit. Okay, that's good enough. We're mainly interested in the height, and we were going for 405, so... Okay, so over there, hopefully, we will have our encounter, but not immediately. We'll still be far away right now. But we're slowly closing. If you're in a program that, or for some reason you do not have all this information, you can sort of judge progressively how much you're closing over time. And based on that, decide whether you need to slow down your orbit by lifting it up or speed up your orbit by lifting it down. One thing you don't want to change is this encounter region. Here, we'll do all of our of, of the remainder of our burns where we're actually coming uh, close to the target's orbit. So right now would be a good time to do a correction. Over here would not be a good time now to do a correction because then we'll be pulling our orbit away from the target's orbit. Here is going to be where we're going to meet up with it, no matter what. <laughs> this is where we want to meet up with it. If you wanted to change that, if you wanted to do it on the daylight side, you should do that on the first burn. Okay, so uh, here we see that we're here and the target's still in front of us, so that's fine. That's the next orbit, so we'll wait. So we've waited one more orbit, now let's see what the situation is. Note that the closest approach distance it says up there is getting really close. And here we see 7.6. Well, let's do some tests. Now this is the retrograde marker, or taking the energy out of the orbit, or going to a lower orbit, all meaning the same thing. Uh, in this case, I'll uh, do a little bit of a burn uh, forward, and that seems to increase the closest approach distance. Uh, it brought us to 8.5 here. So I want to do the opposite. Now I don't have to turn around because there are thrusters on the... Oops, I don't want the docking port. I want to open the nose cone. There are thrusters on the top of this and we can just shoot them out in the opposite direction. Actually, I put extra thrusters. Let, don't tell Elon. Uh, but we can decrease the separation here. And again, what that's doing is changing this side's altitude. Make sure you don't dip into the atmosphere. Uh, if you're too aggressive, you might accidentally bring that down below the 140 kilometer mark and in the game it's 140 kilometer mark or uh, at least be at a bad altitude. Uh, so you have to be careful about that. It seems like the lowest we can go is about uh, six kilometers. That'll be fine for now. Um, Normally, you would like it to be within 2, but 6 is okay too. Uh, 10, anything under 10 is fine for this purpose. And we'll end this video when we get to 2 kilometers. Then we'll talk about docking. Okay, now we're very close to the target. In fact, we're probably a little bit late for the correction we want to do here. So this is a peculiar sort of correction, and in fact one that I have learned to do a bit differently than I originally did over time. So I'm turning now, I'm stopping it by counter turn. I'm doing the opposite, burning in the opposite direction to stop it. 
and then I add some stability. But uh, I'll waste some fuel to point out what I'm doing. This is the now we're focused on the target's velocity here. Normally we have been looking at surface or orbit, but we can change that to the target relative velocity. And that means this is the direction we should use our thrusters in if we want to cancel out the residual velocity with our target. In other words, if we want to stop still and sort of park next to our target, we would bring this down to zero and we will point at this X marked circle in order to do that. So if I thrust a little bit in this direction, you can see the number, the velocity going down. But let's not do that just yet because we're still six kilometers away. Do we really want to stand, uh, go dead still with the target right now? That was the original way I used to do it, but then I was taught differently by various viewers. And to see this pink marker that looks like uh, uh, three dashes around a circle, uh, that is the opposite direction from the target. So the target is opposite that. That's all we need to know. And the goal is to push this circle with the X towards that. In order to do that, we aim for the opposite side of this marker from that. Or you could think of it as between this circle one, which is towards the target, and that X one, which is the retrograde or negative velocity marker. So we are going to use our thrusters here. And what you'll see is this marker will slowly slide in that direction. One thing you'll see is that the periapsis is going up, which means we're bringing our orbit closer to the target's orbit. The purpose of this is to make sure that our velocity is heading towards the target. And remember, we need to reserve 100 meters per second to come back down. That's another thing. Now, if you do this too early, you can easily get into a situation where you're caught up in the peculiarities of how orbits work. So you don't want to try this particular maneuver too far away from the target or more than 10 kilometers. Then you have to revert to the whole, are you catching up or are you uh, needing to slow down and get into a lower orbit or higher orbit based on that. So right now we're just trying to get that velocity marker towards the target so that we're moving towards it. And now our closest approach distance is going down. But we need it a lot lower than that. This is somewhat forcing the issue and less elegant than perhaps NASA would do it. But there's the ISS in front of us. And what I'd aim for is just two kilometers at this point. And then we get within that two kilometers. Okay, so now we are in the physics render distance in Kerbal Space Program of the International Space Station. We can use this retrograde uh, control point to have the SAS unit turn towards the negative velocity marker for the target, and we'll just park. At this point, once we're within uh, or below 2.25 kilometers, we can just park for now, and then we'll go on to the next video where we do the docking. So there is a lot of stuff about rendezvous that I haven't discussed. Uh, I hope I haven't missed any of the very basics, but we'll continue with other topics when it comes to rendezvous as they come up and as we conduct other missions, uh, for instance, to the moon. Now again, you can't really park with respect to a target unless you're really close. Two kilometers is already pushing it eventually these things will drift away from each other. And that's because they are in different orbits until they're really docked to each other, which means that they have a hard connection. Uh, see, we have an orbit that's 421 by 400. The ISS has an orbit 405 by uh, 422. So these are very different orbits uh, still. They're kilometers apart. Well, we know that because we are two kilometers away. Uh, so it's only part at the moment. 
for, and it's not even zeroed out. It's still got some relative velocity here. So in the next video, we'll try and get them docked so that they don't drift apart. And, but that is a whole other topic. So I'll cover it next time. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.